video Bible reading from the Net Bible, Leviticus chapters 1 through 4 of the Old Testament. Then the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the meeting tent. Speak to the Israelites and tell them, When someone among you presents an offering to the Lord, you must present your offering from the domesticated animals, either from the herd or from the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he must present it as a flawless male. He must present it at the entrance of the meeting tent for its acceptance before the Lord. He must lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it will be accepted for him to make atonement on his behalf. Then the one presenting the offering must slaughter the bull before the Lord, and the sons of Aaron, the priest, must present the blood and splash the blood against the sides of the altar, which is at the entrance of the meeting tent. Next, the one presenting the offering must skin the burnt offerings and cut it into parts, and the sons of Aaron, the priest, must put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then the sons of Aaron, the priest, must arrange the parts with the head and the suet on the wood that is in the fire on the altar. Finally, the one presenting the offering must wash its entrails and its legs in water, and the priest must offer all of it up in smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a gift of a soothing aroma to the Lord. If his offering is from the flock for a burnt offering, from the sheep or the goats, he must present a flawless male, and must slaughter it on the north side of the altar before the Lord. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, will splash its blood against the altar sides. Next, the one presenting the offering must cut it into parts, with its head and its suet, and the priest must arrange them on the wood which is in the fire, on the altar. Then the one presenting the offering must wash the entrails and the legs in water, and the priest must present all of it and offer it up in smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a gift of a soothing aroma to the Lord. If his offering to the Lord is a burnt offering from the birds, he must present his offering from the turtle doves or from the young pigeons. The priest must present it at the altar, pinch off its head, and offer the head up in smoke on the altar and its blood must be drained out against the side of the altar. Then the priest must remove its entrails by cutting off its tail feathers and throw them to the east side of the altar into the place of fatty ashes, and tear it open by its wings without dividing it into two parts. Finally, the priest must offer it up in smoke on the altar, on the wood which is in the fire. It is a burnt offering, a gift of a soothing aroma to the Lord. When a person presents a grain offering to the Lord, his offering must consist of choice wheat flour, and he must pour olive oil on it and put frankincense on it. Then he must bring it to the sons of Aaron, the priest, and the priest must scoop out from there a handful of its choice wheat flour and some of its olive oil, in addition to all of its frankincense, and the priest must offer its memorial portion up in smoke on the altar. It is a gift of a soothing aroma to the Lord. The remainder of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and to his sons. It is most holy from the gifts of the Lord. When you present an offering of brain baked in an oven, it must be made of choice wheat flour baked into unleavened loaves mixed with olive oil or unleavened wafers smeared with olive oil. If your offering is a grain offering made on the griddle, it must be choice wheat flour mixed with olive oil unleavened. Crumble it in pieces and pour olive oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your offering is a grain offering made in a pan, it must be made of choice wheat flour deep fried in olive oil. You must bring the grain offering that must be made from these to the Lord. Present it to the priest and he will bring it to the altar. Then the priest must take up from the grain offering its memorial portion and offer it up in smoke on the altar. It is a gift of a soothing aroma to the Lord. The remainder of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and to his sons. It is most holy from the gifts of the Lord. No grain offering which you present to the Lord can be made with yeast, for you must not offer up in smoke any yeast or honey as a gift to the Lord. You can present them to the Lord as an offering of first fruit, but they must not go up to the altar for a soothing aroma. Moreover, you must season every one of your grain offerings with salt. You must not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be missing from your grain offering. On every one of your grain offerings, you must present salt. 
If you present a grain offering of first ripe grain to the Lord, you must present your grain offering of first ripe grain as soft kernels roasted in fire, crushed bits of fresh grain. And you must put olive oil on it and set frankincense on it. It is a grain offering. Then the priest must offer its memorial portion up in smoke, some of its crushed bits, some of its olive oil. In addition to all of its frankincense, it is a gift to the Lord. Now, if his offering is a peace offering sacrifice, if he presents an offering from the herd, he must present before the Lord a flawless male or female. He must lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it at the entrance of the meeting tent. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, must splash the blood against the altar's sides. Then the one presenting the offering must present a gift to the Lord from the peace offering sacrifice. He must remove the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that surrounds the entrails, the two kidneys with the fat on their sinews, and the protruding lobe of the liver, which he is to remove along with the kidneys. Then the sons of Aaron must offer it up in smoke on the altar atop the burnt offering that is on the wood in the fire as a gift of a soothing aroma to the Lord. If his offering for a peace offering sacrifice to the Lord is from the flock, he must present a flawless male or female. If he presents a sheep as his offering, he must present it before the Lord. He must lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it before the meeting tent. And the sons of Aaron must splash its blood against the altar sides. Then he must present a gift to the Lord from the peace offering sacrifice. He must remove all the fatty tail up to the end of the spine, the fat covering the entrails, and all the fat on the entrails, the two kidneys with the fat on their sinews, and the protruding lobe on the liver, which he is to remove along with the kidneys. Then the priest must offer it up in smoke on the altar as a food gift to the Lord. If his offering is a goat, he must present it before the Lord, lay his hand on its head, and slaughter it before the meeting tent, and the sons of Aaron must splash its blood against the altar sides. Then he must present from it his offering as a gift to the Lord, the fat which covers the entrails, and all the fat on the entrails, the two kidneys with the fat on their sinews, and the protruding lobe on the liver, which he is to remove along with the kidneys. Then the priest must offer them up in smoke on the altar as a food gift for a soothing aroma, all the fat belongs to the Lord. This is a perpetual statute throughout your generations. In all the places where you live, you must never eat any fat or any blood. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the Israelites when a person sins by strain unintentionally from any of the Lord's commandments, which must not be violated, and violates any one of them, if the high priest sins so that the people are guilty on account of the sin he has committed, he must present a flawless young bull to the Lord for a sin offering. He must bring the bull to the entrance of the meeting tent before the Lord, lay his hand on the head of the bull, and slaughter the bull before the Lord. Then that high priest must take some of the blood of the bull and bring it to the meeting tent. The priest must dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord, toward the front of the veil canopy of the sanctuary. The priest must put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of fragrant incense. That is before the Lord in the meeting tent. And all the rest of the bull's blood he must pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering that is at the entrance of the meeting tent. Then he must take up all the fat from the sin offering bowl, the fat covering the entrails, and all the fat surrounding the entrails, the two kidneys with the fat on their sinews, and the protruding lobe on the liver, which he is to remove along with the kidneys. Just as it is taken from the ox of the peace offering sacrifice, and the priest must offer them up in smoke on the altar of burnt offering, but the hide of the bull, all its flesh along with its head and its legs, its entrails and its dung, all the rest of the bull, he must bring outside the camp to a ceremonial clean place, to the fatty ash pile, and he must burn it on the wood fire. It must be burned on the fatty ash pile. If the whole congregation of Israel strays unintentionally and the matter is not noticed by the assembly and they violate one of the Lord's commandments, which must not be violated, so they become guilty, the assembly must present a young bull for a sin offering 
when the sin they have committed becomes known, they must bring it before the meeting tent. The elders of the congregation must lay their hands on the head of the bull before the Lord, and someone must slaughter the bull before the Lord. Then the high priest must bring some of the blood of the bull to the meeting tent, and that priest must dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord toward the front of the veil canopy. He must put some of the blood on the horns of the altar which is before the Lord in the meeting tent, and all the rest of the blood he must pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering, that is, at the entrance of the meeting tent. Then the priest must take all its fat and offer up the fat up in smoke on the altar. He must do with the rest of the bowl just as he did with the bowl of the sin offering. That is what he must do with it. So the priest will make atonement on their behalf and they will be forgiven. He must bring the rest of the bowl outside the camp and burn it just as he burned the first bowl. It is the sin offering of the assembly. Whenever a leader, by strain unintentionally, sins and violates one of the commandments of the Lord his God, which must not be violated, and he pleads guilty, or his sin that he committed is made known to him, he must bring a flawless male goat as his offering. He must lay his hand on the head of the male goat and slaughter it in place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord. It is a sin offering. Then the priest must take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and he must pour out the rest of its blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering. Then the priest must offer all of its fat up in smoke on the altar, like the fat of the peace offering sacrifice. So the priest will make atonement on his behalf for his sin, and he will be forgiven. If an ordinary individual sins by strain unintentionally, when he violates one of the Lord's commandments, which must not be violated, and he pleads guilty, or his sin that he committed is made known to him, he must bring a flawless female goat as his offering for the sin that he committed. He must lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter the sin offering in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest must take some of its blood with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and he must pour out all the rest of its blood at the base of the altar. Then he must remove all of its fat, just as fat was removed from the peace offering sacrifice, and the priest must offer it up in smoke on the altar for a soothing aroma to the Lord. So the priest will make atonement on his behalf, and he will be forgiven. But if he brings a sheep as his offering for a sin offering, he must bring a flawless female. He must lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it for a sin offering in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest must take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and he must pour out all the rest of its blood at the base of the altar. Then the one who brought the offering must remove all its fat, just as the fat of the sheep is removed from the peace offering sacrifice. And the priest must offer them up in smoke on the altar, on top of the other gifts of the Lord. So the priest will make atonement on his behalf for his sin, which he has committed, and he will be forgiven. God, as I read these laws that, that are written in Leviticus that come from, from you down to Moses and how these people of yours should live I think of a, of a lot of things first off I think about the writers who had to transcribe your word and how they wish they had copy and paste back then <laughs> I think about the, the fact that we now cut off fat from our meat uh, for health reasons yet fat was cut off and offered to you because it was considered the best part of the offering it's just amazing how our our thoughts have shifted over the years. And then I also think how how physically gross all of this is. I'm just being honest. To rip apart animals and pour out blood and it, it must have just smelled horrid in there and and to do all of this every time you sinned intentionally or unintentionally and then you had to pick and choose which type of offering depending upon how that you had sinned. And so that was the next thing that went through my mind is this is just messy and thank goodness we don't have to do this anymore. 
for the forgiveness of our forgiveness of our sins. But then I then I had an, another thought, God. If we had to go through all of this, if we had to go through all this process, I've created this situation. I have I have done this sin in violation of of the Lord's commandments. I need to go pick out this certain animal in order to offer it up or, or the certain grain in order to offer it up for whatever it is that I've done and then go through that process so that the priest does all of the, the things with the animal correctly before I'm forgiven. I'm wondering how that would affect us nowadays if we still had to do that. Would we be more intentional about the forgiveness process? Would it be something that we wouldn't go through because it was laborious and messy? I don't know. It's just what I was thinking about because we have so taken for granted the forgiveness process. You gave up your only son. Giving up a son amongst half a dozen sons is still something that would devastate anybody else. But this was your only son, your only child. And you sent him down here to live like we do. Which that would be hard enough as it, as it stands. But then he had to endure this horrid death. Painful. Horrid death. For all the sins that had ever been committed fell on his heart. All the sins that are currently being committed, all the sins that will be committed, he had to take on while he died painfully on that cross for us. And because he became the blood sacrifice so that we no longer have to sacrifice animals for their blood in replacement so that we don't have to die for our sins, since he took on all of that throughout all of ages. Do we really give meaning to our requests for forgiveness? Do we really intentionally, when we come to you, do we even remember to say, God, I need you to forgive me for this because I really messed up. And if we do get to those words, do we say them with the meaning and understanding that you had to give up your only son in order to be the sacrificial lamb for us. For all time. That we would never have to die to our sin. I'm sorry, but that is crazy awesome. And yet sometimes I think we just gloss over our sins. Sometimes we bring them to you. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes they're intentional. Sometimes we're just kind of winging it. I don't know if I had to go and find a specific animal or a specific grain and bring it to the priest every time I sinned. Would that remind me every time of the process? And shouldn't it right now when I bring my sins to you in prayer, God, and ask for that forgiveness? Shouldn't I remember the sacrifice of your son? And all he had to go through for me to be able to live free of my sins. God, I know this is, this is just one more thing we need to work on. As your people. But to me, this kind of seems like a big one. I thank you. I thank you more than I will ever be able to thank you for the opportunity to have my sins forgiven. I thank you that you did send your only son down here to earth to die a horrendous death and to take on the weight, not only of just my sins, but the sins of everybody in the entire world so that we could be clean as snow with forgiveness. God, thank you 
for this process. Thank you for your son and thank you for his sacrifice. Please help us to always remember that you have given up so much to love us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.